Hello, and welcome to Cooking with Todd. This is Todd. For today's video, I'm making a chicken bone broth. So, a bone broth is pretty much a chicken broth, in a way, except you use the bones to make the broth, and it actually kind of gels up because the gelatin that's in the bones gets extracted via the cooking process. But for this, I'm going to use two to three whole chickens. I'm going to start by cooking the chickens in a big pot that I have on my stove. I think it's a 12 quart. If I can't fit all three in there, that's fine. I will end up roasting the other one in the oven and waiting for that to cool off and take the bones out and throw those into the bone broth. But I'm actually going to be using this chicken here for another video that I'm going to be making right after this one. So, I actually got these chickens here on sale. I had a manager special because they were about ready to go out of date. I think they might have been out of date. These were in a two pack right here, so they were bundled together. I think it, they expired the previous day, but they're still perfectly fine. So I'm gonna use these. My third one I have, that is one I've had in my freezer since, I think, uh, November of 2020, so it needs used. So, the chicken, you're going to need some carrots. I am just using these baby cut carrots because I got them on sale. They've been in my fridge for quite a bit, July. But, there's some ones that have gone bad in here. I'll just rinse all of them off. And the ones that are still good, I will go ahead and use. You're going to need onions. And I have a bundle here of some homegrown onions that I have that I just picked yesterday. I am going to end up using the greens off of these. These weren't 100% ready. When they're ready, they will end up kind of falling over like this. I don't think this one actually fell over. And it just kind of happened in the process of washing it off. But when an onion's ready to pick, the green here will fall over like that. Then you'll know it's ready. That's kind of what happened with... I got a couple here in the back. Some of those I picked about a week and a half ago, and I cured them. I just pretty much... The weather here hasn't really cooperated, so I ended up just curing them in my apartment on a shelf. So... That ended up working out fine, but you're going to need onions, you're going to need celery. I have one and a half stalks here, I think that's what they're called. And then I have some distilled water. I don't really like using my city water, just because I don't like the flavor of chlorine and all the additives they add in there, so I end up using distilled water for pretty much everything. I'm going to end up using most of this bone broth in a recipe for a canned chicken and rice soup. I know some purists will say you're not supposed to can rice, but I found a rice that has a fairly long cook time. I think this one has a 45 minute cook time. That's fairly long. I've seen rices out there that have about an hour cook time. I would prefer to use those, but I could not get those locally, so this is just what I went with for that. I also do have some homegrown carrots that I grew this year. I didn't get them planted in time to ha for them to come out really large, but I do have some pretty big ones in here. I probably could have let those and the onions go another week or two and they would have been fine. I got a hair here. Um, but life is life and I decided to pick them early. So I'm going to start by getting my chickens out of the packaging they're in and I will be right back. Going to go ahead and throw this one in too. Now I'm kind of lucky that they both kind of fit like that next to each other on the very bottom. 
I probably will end up standing this one here up just because I kind of want room on the bottom. I don't want the chicken sitting directly on the bottom on one side the entire time. So it'd be kind of nice to just do it like that so I could easily adjust them. And kind of, something kind of like that is preferred for me. So I'm going to go ahead and get my counter here wiped off. And I am going to bring my cutting board over and grab my knife. For this, I'm not even going to worry about chopping the ends off of this celery. The only thing I'm going to do is just cut this off like that. I'm going to leave the leaves and everything on there. Then I'm just going to cut it in half, just kind of separate everything here. And I just threw those in on the side of the birds, like that. Then I'm going to go ahead and I don't think I'm going to use all of this right here. I just wanted to use that one up first since it was used first. I think I'm just going to go ahead and use all of this. And if you see any dirt or anything in here, you can wash it off. Okay, so I got both sides of my bird here pretty much packed with celery. Now I'm going to go ahead and get my onion here. I'm going to just lop the top off out of habit. I'm going to throw that in the pot. I'm going to take the root end off. I'm not even going to take the skin off of these. The skin will actually add color into the broth. I'm just going to quarter the onion and then throw the onion right in along with the skins. I probably could get away with throwing the root side in, but I just don't like adding it. I don't know why. Now this onion is clearly not good, but I'm going to cut it down until I find good onion like that. Then I'm just going to discard of that. And the rest of this looks perfectly fine, so... I think that is all the onion I'm going to add. I did have an extra small one. I think I'm just going to use it. And this one I'm not even going to bother cutting in half. Or a quarter, whatever you want to say. Alright, now that's in. Now all I have left to add right now are my carrots. I don't know if I'm going to use all of these right now. I might end up putting about half of these in now, depending on how much more my pot can hold. My pot's getting kind of full. Now, like I said, there's bad carrots in here. Like, see that one was up against one that's bad. So I'm probably going to go ahead and make room in my sink. I'm going to wash these off. 
off camera and I will be right back. Okay, so I have my carrots here. I rinsed them all off, sorted through them, got all my bad ones out of here. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop these right on top of my minus the one that just fell on the floor. I'm going to wipe my cutting board here off right quick. So now I have the majority of my vegetables in here. This is all I'm adding at this point. The chicken is going to shrink. So all of this is going to be able to go down a little further. I'm not going to worry about covering it 100% in water right now. There is a couple other things I did forget at the beginning of the video that you're going to want to add. And that's just some simple herbs. I will bring those out after I get this gallon in. Alright, and that one gallon came about an index finger away from the top. Now there's some voids in there with the chicken and everything. So by the time it gets warmed up and everything, it's going to drop. So I'm going to go ahead and get my board put back where I normally keep it. And like I did say, I am going to add these, the greens of my onions. That's going to come later. I am adding that after my chicken comes out because I'm a little strapped for space in this pot right now. Okay, so I am back with the other ingredients I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video. And that is some um, fresh rosemary, fresh oregano, and fresh thyme. I normally like to throw in some... I think it's marjoram. Yeah, that's mar it's marjoram. That's the other herb I typically have. But right now, it's kind of died back a little bit because I've got to water my herbs for like two and a half, three weeks now. So everything is really dry, and these are really the only thing that has held on. My mint, my peppermint has held on, surprisingly. And my basil is pretty much just all wilted, so it's probably not going to come back. But this is all that survived. I went ahead and watered it before I picked anything. Hopefully, by me trimming all of this off, it's not going to kill my plants, because I planned on keep bringing them inside to keep for next year. But I am going to go ahead and just tie all of this together into, I think it's called a bouquet garni, or however you pronounce that. I will throw the name on the screen during editing. Then you're going to need some bay leaves. I don't have any fresh bay leaves, so I'm just going to use some dried bay leaves. So, it's quite simple to just tie these together. Just take a string, throw it down, and you just tie this together. And if any of these smaller leaves fall off or small snippets come out, it's fine. This whole bouquet is going to be pulled out and I'm going to strain everything through some cheesecloth. So that's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take maybe six bay leaves, depending on the size, like that one. I'll con constitute that as a half a leaf, since it technically is. Trying to find a smaller one. There we go. That's about ten decent sized leaves there. I'm going to go ahead and just switch my camera angle over to my pot. Alright, so it is starting to warm up here. The water is starting to steam a little bit, which is what I wanted. 
obviously. So I am going to go ahead and just drop these in in random areas on the side. I'm not really too worried about them getting submerged at this time. And I'm going to just plop that right on top. Everything is going to start sinking down a little bit. If it doesn't really get any lower, or any of the ingredients get lower, or the water level don't rise too much, I'll probably end up coming in and just rearranging everything so this will get submerged. But I'm just going to let, let this go for about half an hour until it comes up to a simmer. And if this still isn't submerged when it comes up to a simmer, I'll go ahead and rearrange stuff in here, but I'll bring you back for that. And a couple other things I did forget is because I keep them in a little bin off to the side, this is just all of my stuff I don't really use that much. I'm trying to find my peppercorn and I like to use some whole cardamom. Here's my peppercorns. And depending if I really want to, I'll throw in some cinnamon, but I am not wanting to add any cinnamon. And some star anise, or anise, however you say it. I think that is it. And for that stuff, I will be using my little sachet here. So I'm going to go for about 10 of these. And these just kind of add a licorice taste that I really like. So if you don't want to use these, you don't have to. Alright, I think that's good enough right there. So I'm going to throw that into my drawstring muslin bag. I'm going to eye out about two tablespoons. That's about one right there. Of whole peppercorn. And there's about two. Probably throw in a little more. Alright, there we go. Then I'm going to add in about that much cardamom. I'm not going to really count it out. It's about a shot glass full if you want to reference something. I'm going to go ahead and just tie this shut by using a overhand knot. Like so. And I'm going to go ahead and throw this in the pot too. If you don't want to add any of this here, I would recommend the peppercorn and the bay leaves and the fresh herbs. If you can't get the fresh herbs, I would just go with dried. Dried's not going to have the same flavor as fresh. But the these two things I would say you don't have to use. Just preferred taste for those. So I'm going to go ahead and just put all this back and I will bring you back like I said previously when this comes up to a simmer. Okay so I am back and this has been simmering now for around 20 minutes or so and as you can see the herbs are now submerged. I kind of went through before I started and kind of just pushed everything down a little bit. This chicken here has kind of decided to float up a little bit. That's fine. It will end up cooking all the same. But my sachet of star anise and other things are it's down here on the side. Some of the leaves are falling off of this here, which is fine. I really don't care. It's going to be strained through some cheesecloth anyways. 
so all of that will end up coming off. I'm not sure if I'm going to let this chicken here cook. It's going to go for about an hour before I take the chicken out. I haven't decided if I'm going to let this cook, these two cook first, then throw in the other chicken and let that cook for another hour in the broth. I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do, is just cook the other one, because I don't feel like roasting it, really. I kind of prefer it to be cooked in the same manner that these are, because it's going to be going into a dish, and I don't really want one jar having chicken that don't taste like the like it was cooked this way, and then another jar having chicken that does, you know, just kind of OCD, I guess. So I'm going to probably cook the chicken in this broth that it makes, and after that I will finish the bone broth. Um, once this chicken's done, it's going to need to cool off for about an hour. So while that's cooling off, I'm going to lower the heat really low. Kind of, I would be looking for a lower simmer than that. I'm honestly wanting to get this entire pot full of bone broth. Because it's going to be reduced anyways. So, I, when I make my broths, I kind of like to make them a little concentrated, if you'd want to put it that way. I like to reduce it quite a bit. And then... After I open the jar up, I'll put another jar in. Kind of like a, a condensed soup, in a way. That's kind of how I like to make mine. So, if something calls for, say, a quart of chicken broth, then I will put in a pint jar of chicken broth and add another pint jar of water to that. So, that's how I like to do it. Now, I don't know if I'm going to do a full concentrate like I normally do. So for instance, how I normally do it is I will throw in three gallons is what this holds. So I would normally put three gallons of distilled water and then I would reduce that to about a gallon and a half. So half. So I'm probably going to reduce this by at least a gallon. So I'd let a gallon of the water boil off or simmer off, whatever you'd want to say. But I don't know, I really don't know how I'm going to do it today. We'll just let things happen as they happen, I guess. So I will just bring you back when it comes time for me to debone everything. I might end up bringing you back when I throw the other chicken in. It's no different than how it is now. So we'll just see how things develop as time goes on. Okay, so I'm back. I got my chicken bread chicken breast. That's what's on top, so I want to say chicken breast. I got my whole chickens here. This is all of the meat that I got off of the bones. There's still some meat on the bones. Nobody's ever going to be able to get everything off. But I ended up using the broth that I'm starting to make to cook the third one instead of just roasting it in the oven. And I have tried the meat and it does taste like the broth, so that is nice. It's not strong like it would be if it was a rotisserie, but that's fine. It's going to be in the broth that I'm making now and the canned stuff that I'm going to be making in a separate video. So I'm going to go ahead and switch my camera angle over. So here is my broth that I currently have going. and. I'm going to give it a quick stir. I'm going to wipe my spoon off right quick with some paper towel. Okay, so as you can see, the leaves are pretty much completely all off of the herb sachet or whatever you want to call it. And I think I just saw a piece of, I don't know, something in there from the chicken, but I think it might have been a wing. So I don't really care about that. There ain't much meat on there. I did end up adding about another half gallon of distilled water to cover that chicken as when I put, since I put it in there, 
all the carrots and everything made it sit a little higher. Yeah, that was a chicken. I don't know. That was the tail of the chicken. So, I'm going to go ahead and add the bones back in. And it took two hours in total for the chicken to cook. So I'm going to go ahead and just give all this a stir. I'm going to switch over to something a little more substantial, like this big paddle here. Which will also let me get all the way to the bottom to scrape the bottom up. Get all the stuff from the bottom up to the top. I'm going to grab one of my utensils. Things there. And I am going to end up cutting the green part of the carrot here off. And that's going to go into that. But those carrots are going to be for a different video that's going to be coming out after this one. These onions that I have here that I picked from the garden, I am going to go ahead and cut the greens off. I'm going to switch my camera angle. All right those off to the side. I'm just going to cut it right about there. The rest of the onion I'm going to use in my recipe. I'm going to go ahead and just cut the roots off while I'm here. Just throw those off in the back along with that onion. This here I'm going to just cut into pieces. Now these really look like spring onions. <laughs> like everything about these look like spring onions, but they're not spring onions. They're Spanish, I'm going to say yellow onions. I'm just going to cut this like that. And then all of this I'm going to throw into the pot with my bone broth. Just to add more flavor. And I don't really like to waste anything so by me doing that it ensures that everything is being used and before I did go through and I just kind of broke the ends off <clears throat> and I forgot a couple but the dead ends like that I just cut off Pretty sure I don't have to do that, but it's just something I wanted to do. And I'm not really being particular about how I'm cutting these. And if you don't have fresh onions or anything to use for this, normally when you're curing an onion, you would leave these greens on and you wouldn't cut them off like this. But since I'm going to be using the onion right away and I'm not going to cure it to use later, I am going to just use the greens. And by curing it, let me get this out of here. When you cure an onion, all you're doing is trying to create this papery outer layer. The outer layers of the onion will pretty much just dry up and make that papery skin. And that is one of the things that helps it last so long.
But if you don't have fresh onion, like I do, you can go ahead and just use regular store-bought onion, which is what I ended up putting in there. I didn't use my fresh onion, I'm reserving that for the next video. But I just don't like wasting, so... I am throwing that in. And I am going to go ahead and just give this a stir to get the, I'm just going to say green onion. Because that's really what it is. And I'm also getting ready to put my onions in the garden for next year, along with my garlic. So by me pulling all of this stuff now, it made room for new stuff to go in for next year. So I'm going to bring this back up to a simmer, raise my heat back up. I will periodically come back and give it a stir. Kind of like how I am now, going down all the way to the bottom, bringing it up to the top. Just so everything kind of has a chance to be at the bottom and get to know each other and everything and whatnot. And I'm going to probably let this go for maybe one, probably somewhere around three hours just simmering like this. It's a labor of love for sure. So I will bring you back when it's all done. It's been simmering away now for, I'm going to say about three and a half, four hours. I have gone through and skimmed the fat off the top put that in a half gallon pitcher and put that in my chest freezer to try and get that to solidify make it a little easier to separate since I don't have a fat separator so I'm going to go ahead and just get all of this skimmed off I'm just gonna take my spider here Maybe not do quite as much. But all of the vegetables that I have put in here has done their job. So those are no longer needed. So you can just discard of them. But I'm going to... This is... How I'm going to do this, I'm going to go ahead and just finish this up right here off camera and I will bring you back. Okay, I am back. I got everything strained with my spider that I could. I have me an 8 quart stock pot here. I have my colander lined with cheesecloth. These are two separate sections of cheesecloth. Okay, so my 12-quart pot is now completely empty. Everything is now in my cheesecloth-lined colander over my 8-quart pot. Now, I'm going to just let this sit here, let gravity do the work. This might take an hour or two, I don't really know. But this is pretty much it. I am not going to salt this. If you would want to salt yours, go ahead and salt it to your taste. I'm probably going to add the rest of this gallon of water back here just because I am thinking I'm going to use all of my bone broth here in the upcoming video I'm making. If I don't end up using it, I'm going to pressure can it in pint jars. But this is pretty much concentrated. I think I've boiled off at least a gallon of the three that I have put in there. 
So it's concentrated enough for my liking. I also have a little bit of extra liquid that's in the pitcher I have in the freezer trying to get that uh, fat to solidify. I'm going to use that fat too. I'm not letting anything here go to waste except the stuff that I'm straining off. I ended up adding the rest of that gallon to this and that is what I'm left with. I'm guessing I got about two gallons in there so it has been reduced by a gallon at least. I'm going to let this sit on here for a little longer just to try and get a little more out of there. But I'm pretty much done with it at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and just wrap this video up. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you enjoy the content I'm putting out, make sure to smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for coming along with me on this journey of mine.